Hi everyone, welcome back to East Coast Haunts. I'm MK. And I am Sam. And we hope that you all had a very spooky, happy, safe Halloween. Spooktacular, even. We had a very lovely Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween celebration. We threw a little party for our friend. A little shindig, and it was very, very fun. It was great time. Sam, what did you go as? I went as olive oil, a la Popeye and olive oil, because my boyfriend is bald right now <laughs> for, for his job. Um, so I thought we should capitalize on the baldness, and he should be like a bald character. So he was Popeye, I was olive oil. It was fun. I got insecure, so I didn't end up wearing my wig because, like, I was like, Aww. that just isn't the. I was like, that's just not the vibe of the night. You know what I mean? Yes. But it was still very, very fun. Mary Kate, tell us about your costume. So my costume was homemade, and I was very, very proud homemade. of it. I was like, literally very the proud entire thing was homemade. And I was Audrey too from Little Shop of Horrors, which, if you don't know, is the giant man-eating plant. Yes. And my boyfriend was Seymour, as in suddenly Seymour. Suddenly Seymour. And it, it was, was hilarious. It was, it I was think it was so fun. funny. It was fun because, like, typically with a co- like a couple's costume, you would do like Audrey and Seymour. But I was like, like I what if I just? just <laughs> she had okay. So you had like the green dress, and then you had a belt that you made. Out of vines, like vines and like plastic leaves. There were succulents everywhere, and then she took two foam green balls <laughs> and cut little mouths with, and made little teeth fangs coming out of them out of hot glue. It was. They were really good. <laughs> it was you. really good. It was a fun costume, and then for the party, I made like little Audrey two cupcakes, and I cut like little strawberries in half, and like. Piped little teeth coming they were so out. Cute. That was, I think, my favorite thing that I made. And they were red velvet, which just adds yeah. to the, the gore <laughs> factor. Um, you also made some jello eyeball shots, which you were being hard on yourself about, but they I, were delicious. They were good. I, ew. I, well, maybe it's just because I don't like jello shots. Yeah. Any jello shot is going to have a weird consistency because it's jello. Yeah. But that yours were like a better consistency than any jello shot I've had. They were, Thank I you. thought they I were delicious. And they were like that. vanilla y. They were really good. Thanks. That was the condensed milk. Yeah. The condensed to milk tell us about your thing. appetizer that you made it was adorable and your and your drink your yes. specialty cocktail all right so my appetizer that i made was um they were jalapeno popper mummies so they were just like regular jalapeno poppers and then i wrapped like crescent roll dough on them to kind yes, of make it look like adorable. mummy wrapping and then i did like two little candy eyeballs um and they were then, adorable and delicious. Thank you. They were a little spicy i like oh i love a little bit of like kick though yeah i know i was like I don't know. I'm kind of a wimp with spices sometimes. Um, anyway, and then for my drink, I made like a, it was like inspired by ghosts and it was like all white. Um, and it was like Sprite, Malibu, coconut cream, and uh, vanilla vodka. And then on top, I put these cute little um, ghost peeps. Yeah, ghost peeps, which is like, you know, the pièce de la résistance. <laughs> <laughs> They were also delicious. Thank you very much. There was lots of chunks of coconut cream in there, but that's okay. You know what? Sometimes you gotta have a little texture. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> you're so right. I, I meant to do that. Tell and, me about yours. Oh, I made a drink called Smashing Pumpkins because it's like you know. And I was uh-huh. smashing into the floor after this because it was <laughs> all alcohol. It was so good though. There were no mixers in this drink, which I. I realized as I was making it, like... You're like, wait a minute. I was like, this is going to be so strong. It was so good, though. It was good. I would have... So it was Kahlua, Irish cream, and cinnamon schnapps. Yeah. I think I would have decreased the amount of cinnamon schnapps next time because it was like a one-to-one-to-one okay. ratio. And I all liked I could it. taste I liked the cinnamon. I kind of liked that, though. I, really? do, I like cinnamon a lot. I, I do, too, really but good. like I thought it was a little overpowering. Tis so the I season, thought that was good. I, I thought it was yummy, and then we made like a big charcuterie board, which yes, was adorable. fun. I love making charcuterie boards. And you arranged the cheese, like so it kind of looked like a ribcage. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Like that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it was very spooky and fun. It was a great time. We got pictures up on our Instagram 
of our costumes and our signature cocktails. Go check them out. And the cupcakes. It was really, it was a good time. We we did a little like murder, murder mystery. mystery game. And it was literally was the funniest thing ever. We're going to do that for our family Christmas party. We've decided to. It's going to be a blast. So. That's going to be funny because it's going to be a totally different dynamic. And everyone's oh going to be slightly more sober, I think. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I cannot wait to watch our grandparents. Oh, they're going to be so good. Mystery they're going to, we're going to have to put them together on a I team. I was going to say, yeah. I don't think grandpa uh, would do well on his own. <laughs> But it was so fun, though. It, it was, was a blast. We hope you guys also had a very fun Halloween. Yes, please tell us what you did on the Instagram. Leave us leave us a comment. And tell us if we looked sexy in our costumes. Well, well should I delete them? <laughs> <laughs> so, we thought for this little Halloween-themed episode that we would do a fall draft because the, the whole like draft pick concept is becoming very popular on TikTok. And among other podcasters. Yeah. So we're going to do a draft of our top five fall things. And this can be anything fall, but you just have to like pick something that reminds you of fall. It could be Halloween. It could be Thanksgiving. Anything. Anything. And you pick five things. Yes. Okay. And it'll alternate. So one of us will go first and then the next person will pick. Okay. And we're going to do rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. So decide who goes first. Wait, I have a question. So I can't say like Halloween as one of mine. No, you can. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. All right. Sam goes first. All right. For my first one, <laughs> I'm going to pick Halloween. Because <laughs> that is when I think of fall, that is the first thing I think of. Okay. I respect it. Thank you. I'm going to pick horror movie marathons you which would. i know is coming as a shock to <laughs> literally no one but there's nothing that gets me quite in the fall mood like watching several horror movies back to back to back do you have a second pick i do i'm going to say pumpkin spice <laughs> because i love the f- i I understand that people like to be edgy and be like, it's so basic. I think it is such a good flavor. It's so warm and cozy, and I just love it. It makes me feel like fall. That is a great pick. Thank you. For round two. I'm going to go. <laughs> round two pick. Let's hear it. A nap after Thanksgiving dinner. <gasps> oh, shoot. <laughs> the okay. tryptophan from the turkey is hitting. The <laughs> tryptophan. The tryptophan is hitting. It's always nice and warm in the house because the oven's been going all day. Football is on. It's some great, like, white noise in the background. Some of the best naps of my life have been on the couch yeah. after Thanksgiving dinner. That's a really good one. Thank you. I didn't. That didn't even cross my mind. I need to get, like, creative now. All right. <laughs> um, my third round draft pick is going to be crunchy leaves no you stole I my did? next one that was my next oh, one i'm so sorry it's okay the feeling of stepping on a leaf that is super crunchy oh there's really there's it's nothing so like satisfying. it there's nothing like it truly i'll i'll give it to you that was an thank excellent you. pick thank you so much um my third round pick i just had oh corn mazes I love corn mazes. Yeah, corn mazes are really fun. There's a farm near my house. Um, it's called Allsteeds. Allsteeds up in North Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, they do like a huge corn maze. <gasps> and it combines two of my favorite things ever, which is corn mazes and trivia. So at each no like, way. fork, they have a trivia question. It's different themes every year. And if you get the question right, it points you the right way. But if you you get it wrong then you go the wrong way and it takes you longer to get out i know you would tear that up it's so fun that sounds like your heaven it really it is it's a great time that sounds so fun yeah it's lit i love corn mazes although sometimes the hay makes me feel oh no i'm thinking of a haystack maze never mind yeah well those are like slightly less elite than yeah the corn maze, I think. corn maze you can't beat they spent all year growing the corn i know the corn maze. and then it's so fun i know and then it's over um Sorry, that was weird. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. My fourth round draft pick 
is going okay so i have halloween crunchy leaves and pumpkin spice i am going to say this is basic but sweaters Okay, I thought you were gonna take my pick again, and I was no, like, so. But I guess yours starts with an S. Now it does. What it is. Well, sort of. I love, I love sweaters. I think fall is the best fashion-wise. Like, I think it is so easy to look fashionable in I fall. Agree. Whereas, like with summer, I feel like it's not as easy. Summer's hard because you can't layer anything. Yes. And then, like, you can have a cute jacket, but you're gonna be sweating your ass. Exactly. Off, you know. But like leggings and a sweater, jeans and a sweater, a skirt and a sweater. Like, yes. I just I love sweaters. They're classic. Yes. Staple of the fall wardrobe. Love Absolutely. It. Great pick. Thank you. Mine is bonfire s'mores. Ooh. Like doing like a bonfire and telling like spooky stories and roasting marshmallows. So I thought you were gonna say s'mores. No, I love that. I don't. I honestly don't even know the last time I had like a bo- a bonfire. So. So my mom has this like little portable bonfire. What? It's it is what do you the mean? coolest thing ever. I love it. I'm not allowed to play with it though. <laughs> <laughs> the engineer is not allowed to play with it. The 22 year old engineer is not allowed to touch the bonfire. <laughs> what the heck? Wait, how does that work? So it's it's literally this like little stone like almost like a stone cup. Okay. You could, but like really thick walls. Okay. And you pour rubbing alcohol in the center and you light it on fire. Wow. And it's like this little thing and you can roast marshmallows or it's just like a really cool thing to like have on your counter. That's really cool. It's neat. But I prefer like the bonfire smell like outdoor and it's like cold oh, yes. and everyone's like gathered around the fire and then you're like telling fun stories and like maybe having a few drinks and then like you know yes. roasting s'mores. That's my fourth round pick. That sounds really nice. I like that a lot. Thank I want to experience that. I feel like I haven't even experienced that in my life. Perhaps we shall. We shall perhaps for Thanksgiving. We <gasps> could do a bonfire. Bring the portable bonfire. Yeah, we could. That'd be really. Fun. I'll text my mom. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Very exciting. All right, your fifth and final pick. Okay, my fifth and final pick is going to be apples because Bye-bye. apple pies yeah. are really good and they're really fun to make. Yeah. I like going apple picking. I didn't do it this year. It's not too late though. I like I love going apple picking. I think Well, it's apparently really fun. it is too late actually. Oh yeah, the place we wanted to go. Yeah, it was complete it was fully closed for the season. Yeah. I checked That's two cool. days before we were supposed to go and it was like come pick your own apples and I went on the morning that we were supposed to go and it was like closed for the season. I, I was wonder, like I wonder if all the apples have been picked you know what i mean maybe yeah maybe like maybe they all were picked before halloween i don't know but i feel like they lost out on so much business but i guess they didn't need it once maybe it's not apple season once it hits november i guess so who knows so i don't know but yeah i would say apples i love apples great pick thank you apples with cinnamon like an apple crumble bacon with fresh picked apples (gasps) caramel apples gorgeous so just so good going off of that this is going to be a controversial pick. Okay. I feel like there's some people out there that are going to agree with me and some people that are not. What are you going to say? Candy corn? I'm picking... No. Oh, I hate candy corn. I'm picking squash. Like, fall squash, butternut squash, That's acorn fair. squash, spaghetti squash. Pumpkin counts as squash. Pumpkins count as squash. Gourds. Pumpkin seeds. I'm picking squash. Okay. And that's honestly a very all-encompassing, like... I would have never, never thought to myself, oh, squash, but like it is a huge part. I love squash. It's so good. I, love I could eat zucchini squash. every day. What did we just have for dinner today? I love zucchini. Spaghetti squash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we literally had spaghetti, spaghetti squash. squash tonight. And also the name delicious. squash is just squash. Great. Squash. Squash. So I think that's a very good pick. I'm going to have to put our our draft up on the Instagram and see <gasps> who's team vote. is the winner. I love it. Okay, wait. That's so fun because I assumed that it was just like whoever, like you get to cho- like we got to choose, and I was like, well, obviously I'm gonna choose mine, and you're gonna choose yeah. yours. <laughs> so that makes more sense that we're having other people vote. Yay! Yes. So make sure you let us know whose fall draft you like better. Um, and now on to like the main beef of this episode, the big kahuna the- of the episode, <laughs> <laughs> the head honcho of this the episode. episode. So. I had the privilege of interviewing Jane McLaughlin, who runs a company called Haunted History Productions, 
out of North Jersey and she goes and she does walking tours of these towns. She tells you the history of it. She tells you some ghost stories and she has, has such a creative imagination. She was such a wonderful guest to interview and I think we're going to be doing more collaborations with her in the future. Very exciting. She also could not have been nicer and I know for a fact that she's coming back with some Christmas themed events in the future. So in uh, November and December. So please go check out her Instagram. I'll tag it in our post. But she really is such a wonderful woman. And I'm so excited to share this interview with you guys. So without further ado, here is my interview with Jane McLaughlin of Haunted History Productions. Hi everyone, welcome back to East Coast Haunts. I'm MK, and today I'm going to be interviewing a very special guest, Jane McLaughlin of Haunted History Productions. Jane, first of all, on behalf of Sam and myself, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with us, because we know that fall, and especially Halloween time, is a very busy time for you. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your company? I would love to. And first of all, thank you for having me as a guest today, oh, because I am also a fan of you guys. So there we go. Aww, thank you. <laughs> My company started 14 years ago uh, as a volunteer to raise funds for the town of Woodbridge. I was a member of the Arts Alliance there, and they asked me to come up with, the, well, they basically said, we need to bring people into the town. And the idea of haunted stories just hit me. Like, who doesn't love a good haunted story? And Woodbridge is one of the oldest pro provinces in the state of New Jersey. That's well over 250 years old now. So they have a lot of history and a, lo a lot of hauntings. So the first story that came to me was the Board of Ed building there in downtown Woodbridge, which I did a little bit of investigating, talked to the people that work there, found out who kind of who they think haunts the building and then I wrote my story. I did a little bit of um, a little more history on the on the town, um, the revolutionary times, uh, prohibition. We just go through the whole gamut of time periods and then I created these different historical haunted stories which helps people learn about history in a fun way. You kind of do the same thing because I was very intrigued with your Gettysburg, your your Gettysburg um, podcast. There was a lot of history in that. So not only yeah. do people get to learn about the history, but they get to learn about it in a fun way. And there are a lot of people out there that love haunted stories and hauntings. So it just kind of all meshed together. People would come to the Woodbridge Ghost Walk. They would like what I was doing and they would ask me to do it for their town. And that's how that's it awesome. 14 yeah, years that's later. That's awesome. <laughs> that's amazing so you've been in the business for a while that's awesome I actually I I didn't know Woodbridge was haunted I I grew up in the area so I'm gonna have to check that out check out the board of ed and and see see if I recognize any of the places so what made you like interested in all things horror spooky that type of stuff well you probably you will not know this but you've heard the names um Barnabas Collins, um, yes. Dark Shadows. Okay, when I was mm -hmm. a little girl, I would race home to watch Dark Shadows. And I, I, I mostly really love the things like um, True Blood or oh, yes. Twilight. Mm -hmm. those, those really fascinate me. Um, and so I just, I do, I have started to watch the horror movies fairly recently because I look mm -hmm. for inspiration for my stories. Um, mm -hmm. I have also a good friend like your, like Sam is you that we, we've been friends since kindergarten. So we've known each other for yeah. so many years and she is such a horror, like she is a horror expert. So every wow. time I'm thinking I have an idea or I'm looking for something, I would call her my muse because she'll go, Oh yeah. Remember in the conjuring. And then we go back and we watch the movie. Remember in the Annabella move, Annabelle movie, we go back and we watch the movie together. So that's something that we do together as friends, but it also inspires me to um, write my stories. Haunted history is not like chainsaw massacre, that kind yeah. of horror stuff, but who doesn't love a good ghost story? 
That's the thing. No one. And there's a little bit of history there. All the historical facts are correct. They're accurate. And mm -hmm. like you, I'm not, I, I have no major in history, history. So I do most of my research through the local town libraries, talking to the locals. Uh, as a matter of fact, Bernardsville, we, we highlight a, a young lady called, since you mentioned Bernardsville, we highlight a young mm -hmm. lady called Anna Allen. A lot of people don't know who Anna Allen is, but they know her father. Her father, Frank Allen, was very instrumental in developing the, as, is it pronounced, Alcott? Alcott section of Alcott, the downtown? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he actually owned the cinema, built the cinema there. Um, but his daughter, she, there's hardly any information about her, but she was a very, she entered into the, the world of us. She was a psychological, psycholo psychologist doctor. Psychological, okay. I don't even say it. I don't even know. A doctor <laughs> yeah. of psychiatric medicine. How about that? Do doctor Perfect. of psychiatric medicine. Okay. So, but in the time that she was in the very, very late 1800s, early 1900s, there was not women, there was not very many women that would go to become a doctor for this. So I do a little bit of history about her and I create a character for her. I typecast the actress who then comes alive during the ghost walk. And you get to find out a little bit of that, that little bit of Bernersville history that you would never have known before. When you're doing something that combines history and hauntings like East Coast Haunts and like haunted history productions, it's so important that you tell, you know, the real side of the story and then not to discount the hauntings, but they also, you know, there's a lot less scientific fact about them and, and there's a lot less record about them, but not that they're any less real than the history, but it's great that you're telling the story of all these people that otherwise their stories wouldn't have gotten told and they would have been lost to history. So it's great that we get to hear that from you. And do you want to tell us a little bit about like some other ghost tours that you've done? I'm so, I love ghost tours and so does Sam. And so if we're ever on vacation together, we'll sniff one out. I think in our Gettysburg episode, we mentioned that we've done the, um, Gettysburg, the Farnsworth House Inn. We've done that twice. We did one um, in DC together. It's just been a great time doing those. She just did one in Charleston, which was the inspiration for our Old City Jail episode. But it sounds like your ghost tours are a little bit different. So would you like to tell us about those? They are definitely different uh, because I'm hired by the downtown business alliances or the recreation departments for the downtown to bring their history back to life. So I basically do a lot of research. It takes me about 10 months to decide which eight people I want to feature in a tour. Now the tours okay. are an hour long. So from start to finish, you're walking for an hour and you stop eight times and you hear eight different stories. So I have to decide, well, who's eight people worthy in this town that I want to not bring back to life and make sure that they're honored and remembered. And and then I always put a little twist in there, my own flair um, to the history about that person, because there are some people where there's a lot of history about their personality and what they did and what they were like. And then there's very little history, like with Anna Allen about her and, or what she was like. That's where I get to be creative. That's my favorite part about it. So that's where I give that person uh, a personality. That's so, awesome. Um, yeah, it's it's really super fun. But it, for me, I think it makes learning about history fun. And I get to use my love of ghost story, creepy storytelling, because I'm not an actress and I'm, I'm not a historian. What I really am is a storyteller who has a fondness for history. And it's oh, yeah. All together. It all came together and... At every town that I do, the people that hire me, they, they always want my scripts because they love the history. I don't, I can't give them my scripts, but um, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> but I do, I do love, I, I'm so happy that they are, they think I'm doing such a good job telling their town's history that they really want my, my scripts. And not only that, but a lot of people come up to me afterwards because at the end of every tour, I talk to everybody. And I ask them, what was your favorite story? What did you, what did you like the most? What did you learn about? Uh, and it peaks something along the tour will pique someone's interest about something. There's always something in every tour 
that's there for everybody, whether it's prohibition. Perfect example in Bernardsville, the cinema was built in 1910. That was the vaudeville times. So in vaudeville, um, we talk a in on that tour, we talk a little bit about the history of vaudeville. And one of my favorite vaudeville actors was Red Skelton. So there's a young man that there's a, a who, who haunts the vaudeville cinema is an, is a young actor who grew up in that town. His, uh, we call him Jake in the, in the story. Um, I don't want to give away the story, but let's just say he poached a little bit of someone's jokes. And back in the day, there was no such thing as copyright. So he mm. met a, an untimely demise, probably for stealing someone else's art of uh, uh, art. I call it art. They're, they're, they're storytelling their jokes, whatever they did on stage. And he ended up, you know, spending the rest of eternity in the downtown Bernardville cinema. Um, the, wow. so Red, Skelton, Red Skelton was my favorite. And he actually reenacts a whole Red Skelton scene from vaudeville. And a lot of people don't know who Red Skelton is. They don't know the scene. But what you do know is I Love Lucy's Vidi Vidi Vegemin commercial, where she kept oh, drinking yeah. so the Vidi Vidi Vegemin. Okay. Well, that's that was from Red Skelton. So it, it wow. sends up a light bulb. People then go home and I found my husband doing it the very next day. I woke up the next morning and he was YouTubing Red Skelton's Guzzler's Gin commercial. And he was laughing hysterically because the actor that I hired did it so perfectly, word for oh word. My it was so funny. And then there's people in the tour that are older because it's all ages, it's family friendly. So there are older people that remember Red Skelton, that remember that. And if it wasn't them, then there were people that remembered I Love Lucy's Vidi Vidi Vegemin. And so, and then the kids, they just thought it was hysterically funny, even if they didn't know anything about it. They were just laughing because the whole scene was just truthfully funny. So that's another part of, of Haunted Burnersville that's one of my favorite parts. That is too funny. I grew up going to that cinema. I had no idea that it was haunted, but I guess it does kind of have a little bit of an atmosphere about it. I mean, it's it's so old timey on the inside and and on the outside. Um, one of my favorite parts of like Bernardsville lore, and I just have to throw this in because I'm such a movie buff. But one of the DeLorean cars that was used in the Back to the Future trilogy. The owner actually lives in or around Bernardsville, so he'll bring the DeLorean outside of the cinema and kids will go and take pictures with it, and that's so neat. I, I actually do love that cinema. It's, it's my favorite movie theater to go it's to, hands down. The history for that cinema, it was turned into a multiplex. I guess they divided it into a few different rooms where they had smaller screens. It mm -hmm. still has two rooms now, but at one point, I think it was a huge grand 400 seat uh, cinema with a balcony and, and wow. just a little bit of the history of vaudeville. Like it cost a nickel and you could sit there and see uh, different acts going on all day long, all morning, morning through into the evening. Anybody that had any kind of talent or not even any talent, they just got up there and, and did their acts. And a lot of them went on to be you know, very famous comedians, um, entertainers. You must wow. know about the, you must know about the haunted library, right? About the Phyllis. That Parker. is, that's the ghost story that everyone in Bernardsville grows up hearing. You know, don't go near that place. That was on Paranormal Investigators or Ghost Hunters or one of the big shows. I actually, went back there, I believe, twice because it was so haunted and they got so many good readings. But I actually don't know the ghost story behind it. So, would you care to enlighten us? Well. It turns out that um, General Washington's aides were staying there and they had a satchel of some secret information, which had gone missing. Now, Phyllis was engaged to a young doctor that was renting a room from her father who owned it as an inn at the time. And he was accused of stealing the bag. And it happened so quickly before anybody, or Phyllis, had a chance to know, he was dragged away and he was hanged for his crime of stealing this secret information. Oh my gosh. The spin that I put on it, well, so then the father, Phyllis's father, he gets the body, he retrieves it, he puts it in the pine box, he has it delivered back to the, to the inn. And before anybody got a chance to tell Phyllis, she, her curiosity got the best of her and she opens the box and there is 
her fiance dead in the pine box. Oh, no. So everybody knows Phyllis is crazy. She went crazy. She lived out her long life, but everybody said Phyllis was nuts. According to the library, she still hangs around there. And just for fun, they just, they talk to her. She's friendly, but they gave her a library card in her own name so that she could just oh. read any books that she wants all the time. Now, when you come on my tour, it wasn't just the sight of seeing her fiance dead in the pine box that drove her crazy. It was, it was the, there's a spin to the story and that's the difference. A good, a good ghost story has to have a twist at the end. So there's a twist at the end of this story, which only people who walk on the tour will find out. What was it that really set Phyllis Parker off and drove her a little crazy? Wasn't just losing her fiance. There's a great spin to the end of that story. Oh, Nobody you have it either. Nobody expected it. And I think that the paper liked it because they put a picture of her on the cover of the Bernardsville News. So they, yeah, oh they, had, they, they were there that day taking a lot of pictures, but they, they loved the Phyllis Parker, the actress that I hired and the way she portrayed the story. And she was actually on the cover the following week. How neat. You know, this is the perfect segue now to ask you this because I would love to go on this tour and find out the twist ending. Are there any future events from Haunted History Productions that we should all keep an, out, an eye out for? We have one more left, and that would be next weekend on the 29th of October, and that is in downtown Somerville. And that's Ooh. one of my favorite tours. First of all, I love Bernardsville. I love the stories. Um, I just want to backtrack really quickly to Bernardsville and say one more thing. Yeah. The, uh, the Bernards Inn, at one point, yes. was named Widow Brown's Inn. Hmm. Nobody really knows that. But on the Widow tour, Brown. you find out why and when it was named Widow Brown's Inn. So it, that is leads your imagination to who haunts the Bernards Inn. Could it be Widow Brown? Hmm. We don't really know. But fun story there. But yeah, next weekend I'll be at Somerville and I'm going to be doing what's called uh, Campfire Stories, Myths, and Legends. And that oh, is my favorite because I will be bringing in the Headless Horseman, a beautiful a beautiful horse, like an amazingly huge horse with the Headless Horseman on there. Um, I talk about the, the storytelling that I do is not from not too much from the ghost perspective of the ghost of it is myths and legends. So we talk about uh, the Jersey Devil. I know you did something Ooh. about the Pine Barrens. Yes. Um, at the end of my story, my good ghost story, then again, is a twist. Because you have to ask yourself, the, the Jersey Devil's been seen since the 1500s. It's, it's mm -hmm. the most cited scene. And still to this day, people claim to see the Jersey Devil. So yeah. how could something live that long for that many centuries and never be caught or discovered. So I have a good twist to the end of that ghost story. Ooh. I also talk about the Devil's Tree, which I'm sure you've heard of. Yes. The Devil's Tree is in <laughs> Bernard's Township. Right. Yes. So the tree still stands. I visited the tree. I spoke to the tree. Oh. Inside story. So okay. We can come about that. Yes, we talk about voodoo magic, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, a yeah, we, it's the great, the great voodoo queen, Marie Laveau from New yes. Orleans. Yes. Mm -hmm. And her, her a pet is a long python snake called zombie. So oh we'll my. A little bit on that. I do have a story about possessed dolls. So oh, that's creepy. Super fun. Creepy. Uh, Lucifer. Um, yeah, we can go on and on. It's a great, it's a great show. So that's a, that will oh be next God. Saturday. And the tickets are if on I can Friday, make it, of course. If I can make it, I am there. You've got to, you've got to. And you have to see me. I'm at, I'm at the end in my costume. My alter ego personality is Miss Cookie, which you've seen from my social Miss media Cookie, posts. Miss Cookie, yes. So, yeah, that's super fun because I get to get dressed up and uh, talk to the people afterwards and find out if they enjoyed it, if they had a good time, just so I know if my business is going in the right direction. And I always Absolutely. get feedback, so... Yeah. I don't doubt it. 
It's so neat to hear you talking about all these things because as someone who grew up in New Jersey, and I did talk a little bit about this in our Pine Barrens episode, but one Christmas, my dad got me a book called Weird New Jersey. I'm sure you've heard of it. And it talks about the devil's tree. It talks about the devil's tower in New Jersey. It talks about the Jersey devil. It talks about, you know, the list murders in Westfield. And so to hear you bring up all these things and then also talk about stuff from my hometown is so neat. So I have to thank you so much. And one little fun last question from one horror fanatic to another. I know you said that um, Haunted History Productions isn't inspired by horror, or takes a little bit of, uh, of inspiration from horror movies, but not too much of like the gory ones. What is your favorite horror movie? Do you prefer like the classics or the newer ones? Well, I like them all, but I think that when you think of horror, you have to go back to the classic ones that if, if you call it classic, I'm not talking about Bella Lugosi type uh, mm-hmm. classics, but the ones in the 70s that were right. that came out inspired in the 70s, Halloween, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, those, I think, before you got too much into the crazy cinematography, those right. just really just would scare the heck out of you. And the funny thing about uh, horror movies is back in, they're all based on uh, teenagers drinking, having sex and running in the woods. And then all of a sudden yeah. here comes the killer, right? And it reminds me of that one funny commercial. I won't say what commercial, it's an insurance commercial, but you've probably seen it where the kids yeah. are all the teenagers. Yeah, like, hey, should we get in the running car? Oh no, let's go into the barn with all the hanging uh, <laughs> saws and 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 axes. And it's a, and there's the killer in the, in the commercial just going, oh my goodness, these kids are so yeah. dumb. I just think if that's you're a in a horror movie, show. you make them yeah. commer- or you make them decisions. That's what it is, it's isn't a, it? It's a funny commercial, but yeah, I, I like, love the, I like those. Those horror. I watched them all. Um, I like the original Conjuring and the original Annabelle. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, right. I always find that the first original ones are way better than any oh, other yeah. ones. Truthfully, I prefer those. I agree. I will say. With The Conjuring, you know, Sam and I just did an episode on the real life case that inspired that and also the real life Annabelle case. I will say that we did just watch The Conjuring 2 and that's one of the sequels that I think lives up to the original. But personally, my favorite horror movie, I'm a big Jaws person. That's that's Aww. always, I know people don't really consider that you horror, know, but you don't I love that. Fun. But you're right. Yep. And I remember seeing that. For the first time in the drive-in cinema, oh, I don't know. I must. I must have been. I don't know. Well, I don't want to give my age away, so let's just forget it. <laughs> but I'm having a I'm having a horror weekend girls' night with my my friend Sandy, who's my muse there on this this Aww. Friday night, and I think we will watch. I think we will watch The Conjuring too. Now that you recommend that is so it. fun. I mean, she has seen them all. She's like the expert. Like I said, I always go defer to her to help me understand what's going on and and the backstories and help create my stories. So yeah, we we're planning on a a, a movie night. We'll, one oh, movie that's night. too fun. Well, if you ever need any recommendations, you know how to reach me and and this sounds a lot like Sam and I's relationships because I've seen all the classics, I've seen all the new ones and she we're doing actually a um, series on our Patreon, which is just for like subscribers, but we're going through and we're watching like all the classic horror movies and she's watching them for the first time and I'm getting to rewatch them. And it is such a fun experience and it's just a great way to like bring in the Halloween time of year, you know? Absolutely. But- yeah, we do the same thing. She's, I'm watching a lot of these for the first time and she's, in, you know, and just enjoying watching me watch them. Oh you know, yeah. You did, you did something on one of your episodes about the, um, the, the Conjuring Museum and how it's closed mm-hmm. right now. And I'm just yeah. wondering, maybe, maybe, maybe you and I, we should team up together or with, with, we might be able to get a special tour. You never know. I would <laughs> love to. That sounds, I, I, I really do want to go see all the stuff. And Lorraine Warren are, are quite the couple. And I would love to see all their artifacts that they've collected over the years. You know what I've been watching a lot lately that fascinates me is the alien stuff. Oh my god! Oh, the aliens oh my stuff. god! Aliens and people that have been taken up and had babies and putting them—you know—it's 
it's yeah. really fascinating. I've, I've been spending a lot of time watching that as well recently. That is so funny that you just said that because last night we just, me and my friends actually just finished watching Alien with Sigourney Weaver. And I love, have you seen that movie? Oh, yes. Alien? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's mm-hmm. the best. I love that movie. And then also Close Encounters of the Third Kind is definitely mm-hmm. something that I'm going to have to rewatch. I love Spielberg. I love Richard Dreyfuss, obviously, if Jaws is my favorite. So um, definitely going to have to recheck that out. But I do find that alien alien probing and, and abduction so yeah, interesting. Abduction. That, that's the word I was looking for, the abduction. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Maybe we'll have to do a little bit on that. I think you should. I just recently watched the the, the series. What's it called? 28 Days? 28 Days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you see it yet? I haven't seen it yet. And they have to, they have 28 days to, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Interesting. Yep. Okay. I have to check that out. Definitely. Because I just finished The Watcher Mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing an episode comparing that to the real life case. Have you seen the Have you seen the Watcher? I have seen the Watcher, and and a lot of what they did in that movie, and what you did with your episodes, how you took the list murder, they put that into mm-hmm. the movie. I do some of the same things when I have to mesh my history together for a story. So yes, mm-hmm. the facts are true when I create the story. The facts are true. Um, it might just be a little bit more embellished because I'm blending it into oh, one yeah. story, which is exactly what they did in that series. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's good though. It's and nice. it, it's, it's, I liked it a lot. I really did. I thought, and I think that sometimes you need that little bit of embellishment to keep attention and and really create a great ghost story, which is what, of course, you do. So, well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I just I want people to know when they come on my tours because it says family friendly or for all ages, they get a little confused. What I'm really trying to say is you're, there's not a chainsaw. People aren't jumping out at you, screaming in your face, touching you. Your kids aren't going to be traumatized for the rest of their lives. Um, I'm just the actors. Once they start to tell you the stories, you find yourself drawn into them. You're leaning in to hear the story. And the history part is just a, like a little bit of, of, of sweetness to the story. But the ghost stories really, Absolutely. people love them. Yeah. Oh. my niche. <laughs> I'm so sad that I couldn't come to the Bernardsville walking tour, but if you do it again next year, I will be there. I promise. Definitely next year. It's gu- guaranteed we're doing it next year. Yeah, oh, for great. Sure. I will mark it off on my calendar as soon as possible. Thank you so much, Jane, for, for interviewing with us. Thank you for talking with us. It was great to talk with you, and it was great to learn a little bit more about Haunted History Productions. So, again, thank you so much. Thank you. And maybe I'll see you next weekend. Yes. I hope so. I really do hope so. <laughs> All right. Thank well, you. Thank you okay. Bye. I had so much fun interviewing Jane. And I don't know if you could tell from that interview. Oh, absolutely. I had fun listening to it. Oh, thank you. (laughs) I know. So that was such a great time. And again, Jane, thank you so much for letting us interview you. Um, Looking forward to talking with you again in the future. But again, please, everyone, go check her out. Go check out Haunted History Productions if you live in New Jersey. And uh, we'll be back again soon. Absolutely, with another full part episode. So until then, we will... Catch you on the flip side. Bye, guys. Bye.